Welcome to Tenerife. I was quite hesitant when we booked this trip, but I fell in love with this place from day one. We spent two weeks there, but I created a week's guide to cover the top things to do. For the rest of the time, we enjoyed the island's beautiful beaches and natural pools. My first tip would be to start discovering from the north of the island. We planned our arrival at the north airport and departure from the south airport. But if you arrive in the south, no worries. It's only an hour's drive to Puerto de la Cruz. I would advise you to have your base here to discover the North Tenerife. If you don't rent a car, you can still enjoy the top highlights with different tours or buses, but the car multiplies the experience a lot. We rented our car via Canary Island Car Rental, aka C-Car. They have offices in every major area of the island and are very flexible and accessible. There are many free parking areas on the island, but sometimes it's a challenge to find an empty spot in the city center. We use Muella parking in Puerto de la Cruz when we couldn't find any spot close to our apartment. There are also paid parking garages, which cost maximum of 1.5 euros per hour and 15 euros per day. We also use those when traveling to other cities and did not want to lose time searching for a parking spot. We booked the North Coast apartments for our stay here. The location is perfect and the host was very helpful in solving any request. If you have watched my other vlogs, you know that I never miss breakfast. So day starts at the brunch factory. After fulfilling breakfast, we headed to the botanical garden of Puerto de la Cruz. The official name of this garden is Acclimatization Garden of Orotava. It was created by the order of King Charles III in the 18th century to acclimatize species brought from the tropics. It costs 3 euros per person to visit the garden. All species are labeled and you can find QR codes to listen to information about them in English. It's a perfect place to spend some time away from the heat of the city. The weather was quite hot, so we drove around and stopped nearby at Agatha Christie steps. In 1927, the writer visited Puerto de la Cruz during difficult times in her life. Here she found inspiration to write the mysterious Mr. Queen. Every two years there's a festival in her honor. The next one will be in 2023. On the top of the Agatha Christie steps is a beautiful view of the city. Now it's time to rest at Lago Martianes, an artificial pool complex with seawater. It costs around 5 euros per adult to enter the facility. Although I am not a pool fan, it was a good alternative to rest and enjoy the water when the ocean is furious. We even saw this cute big crab family behind the wall. Another lovely thing to do in Puerto de la Cruz is to wander around the port and the fortress. The Battery of Santa Barbara was built in the 18th century to defend the old port from pirates and corsairs. You can observe the antique cannons from the 18th and 19th centuries. We ended all of our days at the beach. My favorite one was Playa de las Teresitas, close to Santa Cruz de Tenerife. But my husband's number one is Playa Maria Jimena in Puerto de la Cruz. It's a strong wavy beach. It's not my type, but many people enjoy the challenge of the waves. And of course, it's a good place for surfers too. In the evening, we had dinner at Casa Pate. It's a gluten-free restaurant with local Canarian food. The food was amazing and the wine was the best we could taste during our stay. This route was my favorite. Unfortunately, I lost much of the footage from the day. I will still try to share the beauty of North Tenerife. San Cristobal de la Laguna is the old capital of the island. It's a cozy and a local city, yet very popular with tourists. For breakfast and brunch, Makika Cafe is a perfect place. Keep in mind that it's a trendy place. Another spot I would recommend is Cafe Cafe. It 
It is a small city and you can visit a few churches and museums there. If your timing aligns, check Casa Gomez Phillips Museum. You can see various objects demonstrating island life and history here. Its tour times were not suitable for us. Luckily, we had enough time to visit the cathedral. The visit costs 6 euros per adult and 4 euros for students. You will also get a well-prepared audio guide to get familiar with every chapel. The outside looks very humble and minimalist, while on the inside, every chapel attracts visitors in different ways. Of course, the most beautiful and mesmerizing one is the Chapel of Our Lady Remedies. This baroque altarpiece is the largest not only in Tenerife, but in the Canary Islands. Seven paintings represent different scenes from the life of Jesus and the Virgin Mary. I was surprised to see a treasure room here. There are many arts and objects that date back as far as the 16th century. After spending the early morning in the city, we headed to Anaga Park. As I said, I lost lots of footage and all I have left are some reels I made. I recommend hiking in the Anaga, especially in the Pass of Senses. Other must-dos are visiting Benio Natural Pools and eating in Guachinches. The third day is all about the Mount Teide, third highest volcano in the world. Subscribe to my channel to not miss it.